Howdy guys, it's Prickly Instinct here, and for today's video I want to stray away from anime and focus on another passion of mine, science fiction. In science fiction you will always see enormous ships like Star Trek's Excelsior class, or nimble sleek fighters like the Star Wars X-Wing. However, are any of these realistic, and will these designs work in real space combat? So today we will discuss the practicality of real life warships. Firstly we need to clear up a common misconception. Ships don't need to be sleek, and there is no air in space, it's a vacuum. Therefore, your ship can be a wide range of shapes from a sphere to a cube. If we're talking warships, then the ideal shape would be similar to a shark. A rounded hull avoids the stress points caused by corners and is ideal for dissipating energy from weapons fire. As we want a strong hull, we don't want to have any holes in it, so we're going to keep all our weapons, sensors and thrusters off the main body of the ship and on struts, or if we're keeping our shark analogy, fins. Now we have a main body for our ship. We need propulsion. There are many forms to choose of in science fiction. Iron engine solar sails produce small acceleration over a long distance, but old fashioned chemical engines produce a lot of thrust in a short time. Therefore, we are going to use chemical engines. As space has no air for drag, a ship doesn't need a constant thrust like a plane. Instead, the ship would burn its engines till it reached the desired speed, then would cut back, allowing momentum to carry the ship. Braking is the same principle. If a ship wants to break, it just needs to flip its stern to face forward and fire up the engines. As our ship is moving by momentum, it can angle in any direction while moving. This is key for combat as it means you can concentrate all your firepower on the bow of the ship, just manoeuvring to keep your weapons locked onto your enemy. Now this frees up space on the sides of the hull for sensors and the ship's manoeuvring thrusters. Now we have a place for our weapons, we need to choose which ones we want. There is a lot of types to choose from in science fiction, so we're going to run down through each common type and say why it works or why it doesn't. Lasers are the sci-fi go-to for weapons, and they do have merits. They can tear through holes, fry electronics, and they have a pretty good range. Charged particles come with the same benefits, but a reduced range. Problem with these are, we currently have no way of using them in effective combat, so for now, there are maybe. The last sort of energy weapon is the plasma weapon. Personally, I'm not too keen on this weapon, as we really have no theoretical or otherwise way to effectively fire superheated gas as a weapon. So I should we just stick with laser turrets. Next, explosions. This is your missiles, bombs, nukes and torpedoes. Space, as I've said a million times now, is a vacuum. This means no atmosphere to carry a shockwave. This makes explosions pretty bad. Now, don't get me wrong. If any of the above hit a spaceship hull head on, it could do some serious damage. But any point defense weapons could just pick them for range. However, shrapnel missiles would work wonders, exploding for impact, releasing many kinetic ball bearings to shred the hull. Now they work. Also nukes. Nukes along with their shockwaves are producing EMP or electromagnetic pulse. This would be extremely effective against an enemy ship as it would fry the ship's systems. This could take out life support, propulsion and sensors, leaving the ship dead in the water. Lastly, we have the most effective space weapons, kinetic weapons. Be it a giant tungsten rod or small metal ball kinetic weapons are lethal. Usually fired from a rail or coil gun, these unguided projectiles are nearly impossible to track in space. This makes them amazing as it would be a lot harder for ships to take them off with their point defence weaponry. If they hit, they can puncture holes and destroy central systems. These are shown brilliantly in the Lost Fleet series by Jack Campbell with the use of grape shot railgun launchers which shoot ball bearings at the enemy. So we have our ship's weapons, laser turrets, coil guns, a few nukes and a scattershot missile. Lethal. Although force fields are commonly displayed in science fiction, we have no way of making them. The problem is that in concept they don't work. You try to apply a force to nothing to resist an impact. That's like trying to catch a ball with the air between your hand and the ball. It doesn't work. So sorry, we can't do that. So neither can our ship. Before we end our little discussion, I just want to chat about stealth for a while. Yes, stealth in space. It sounds easy, but it isn't. To move in space, you produce frost and that can easily be detected. If you want life support, you need heat, also easily detected. If you want to use sensors, you need to send out a signal, easily detected. So really, to be stealth in space, you can't do anything. Technically, yes, if you have a small ship that produces minimum heat, controlled by an AI, that is using the orbit of the planetary body for movement, then yes, it's possible. But in space combat, no chance. So thanks for watching. If you enjoy, like the video and comment any other aspects of science fiction you want me to tackle. Anyway, this has been Prickly Instinct, signing out.